go here in the clip first. Hey everybody, it's your girl Mariah. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, I like to talk about TV, movies, books. I'm kind of just a TV book junkie, so <laughs> welcome. And if you like this type of content, please subscribe. So guys, I didn't really have a January wrap up because I feel like I didn't have enough books for that. Like I read, but I didn't read enough. So I was like, I'm not going to do a January wrap up. And I also, there's not to have enough books. There's kind of more to the story. Some of these books got D N F. Okay, like they are not what I thought they were going to be. So I wanted to go through my books and just give you the ones that I thought were amazing that I highly recommend. And then talk about these books that disappointed me. I was really disappointed. I could have cried. Like, now, you know, when you have like that expectation, you're like, oh, this book's about to go crazy because the back of the book sounds good. And once again, like I said, that last video, I don't really try to read Goodreads as much before I read a book now because it kind of lets the world be open and I get to like see if I actually like the book rather than like letting somebody else's opinion like kind of tarnish it in the beginning not saying it's tarnished but you kind of have that in the back of your head right when you're reading I said I don't want that I want to just just want to dive into the world of books for fun and see if it's great oh how I dived and oh how it was crazy okay but the first book I did read uh in January was this great and precious things by Rebecca Yaros oh this is a five out of five okay probably a 4.5 out of five but I'm gonna round up I love this book it was emotional. It was childhood friends to lovers. It was somewhat of a second chance romance, which I didn't even know I liked second chance romance until this past like 2023. I stepped into the world of second chance romance. I said, oh my gosh, I like this genre. Anyway, this trope. I highly recommend Great and Precious Things. It's medium to low spice level, just to put that out there. It also follows a guy in the beginning i love when the book starts with the male character's perspective sometimes i don't know it just throws me for a loop and i just love it it's also it deals with some themes that are like oh like this is real like people go through real life and it's shown in this book so if you are prepared to be emotional kind of cry but with an hea would we'll definitely read this book highly recommend it and i think you'll love it so this is one of the good ones one of the other good books, 99% Mind, which guys, when I looked this up on Goodreads after I read it, because I really enjoyed it, I found out I was in the minority. Not everybody likes this book. They were like, not in love. And I said, I love it. <laughs> this is also a friends to lovers romance. Okay, my hair's looking a little hit. Looking a little crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Anyway, this book is also a friends to lovers romance, which is super fun. I love Friends to Lovers. Like, it's right there with Enemies to Lovers for me. So when I'm reading Friends to Lovers, I'm like, yes, I'm eating it all up. I'm ready. Also, I'm not gonna lie, this book got me with the first page. Although I will admit, the first chapter doesn't really, to me, match the book. Once you read the book, you'll understand. You're like, okay, but you go with it. And the first chapter is what got me, though. So I stayed, and I love the relationship between um, Darcy and her friend. <laughs> I do recommend this book. This is also medium to low spice level. Um, and it is just a good, I actually was laughing out loud. Obviously guys, after this book, this book, Great and Precious Things, it's not a rom-com. But the rest of the books on my list, for the most part, maybe besides one, I was like in a real rom-com vibe. I'm starting to get, I can tell I'm ready for something a little heavier. I'm ready for something with more stake, higher stakes, a little bit more angst, all of that good stuff. So that's when I'm gonna step back into the fantasy world, fantasy world. But until then, I do recommend 99% Mine. It's very cute. It's brother's uh, best friend trope also. But they're both best friends with him. So it's kind of like, okay. It's not like, you know, you're not friends with the best friend that your brother has. But she's also best friends. I hope that made sense. <laughs> anyway, I recommend it if you like it. I gave that book a four out of five star. Okay, Faker. These books also, by the way, the only book that I did not get from the public library, two of them, Lucy Scores and Great and Precious Things. I own those two, but these ones I got from the library. So Faker, I just grabbed. I purposely didn't read Goodreads. I love that it sounded like, it said rom-com on the back. I said, that's another reason why it got me. Rom-com and it sounded like a hate to love arc. I'm in love with the hate to love story. Say less. I'm going to eat it up. And I liked it. I did. It was nothing like spectacular. It probably deserves a 3.5 out of 5 stars, but I gave it a 4 out of 5. 
just because I actually enjoyed myself. Also, medium to low spice level, it's fun. Like, she's a girl who works in a predominantly male-dominated industry, you know, at a company, and she's used to just kind of, like, putting on a facade to be a certain way so she's respected. And then this guy who's at the job, so it's also a worker's relationship, you know, um, he comes in and kind of breaks her walls down. So I enjoy this book. I enjoyed it. I do recommend it if you want it. It's nothing crazy, nothing like, oh, you have to read it. It's not, oh, I'm going to reread it again. But it was in, oh my gosh, I enjoyed myself in the moment. And that was that. So on to the next. Heartbreak for Hire. Oh, how I'm so mad about this book. Oh, were my expectations high? Oh, they were high. You know why? Because the back of the book sounded delicious. And when the back of the book sounds that delicious, I'm excited. I'm about to like tear it up. It was like everything you want. It's supposed to be enemies to lovers. Where was the enemies to lovers? <laughs> Where was it? Because I was looking. Her name was Brinkley. You got me at that. I ain't never heard no Brinkley. I ain't never heard of no Brinkley. So I said, I'm going to read this book. Okay, so let me explain it. Let me explain it. Basically, this girl Brinkley works for a company. It's like a secret company. She doesn't actually tell people where she works. They think she works somewhere else. And basically, the company has a group of women who go and they basically ruin other people's reputation if somebody else pays for it because they believe that that person deserves to have their reputation ruined or something exposed. It's pretty cool, fun idea. I said, okay, this is great. You're heartbreaking. That's why it's called Heartbreaks for Hire because like you're breaking people's heart. <laughs> but it also said that the guy, boss, it's supposed to be a, like a work or relationship there's supposed to be a guy that she breaks his heart by doing a job and then he becomes a worker also at the same company and you're like that sounds really good so you broke his heart by doing what you had to do and then he works at your company so you have to be around him oh this is a one i technically gave it a two out of five but i'm mad again now that i'm thinking about it. so this is like a one out of five star do not read this i do not recommend the plot was terrible there was no like true hate to love it was insta lusty insta lovey both of them i said okay this is boring if there's one thing to lose me make anything insta and i'm gone i'm like i'm done no thank you and it did not give it it needed to give so i did get through like half the book then i started to skim and then i freaking did enough i said i'm over this so heartbreak for hire that was the first fail i said i'm crying in the club i was really looking forward to it because i'm in my rom-com mode i told y'all and it just didn't give me what i need to give I technically went out of order because before I even started Great and Precious Things, I actually, I'm going to skip this one for now. I started this book. And guys, look, there's still a bookmark in this book. There's a bookmark. You know why there's a bookmark? I have not gotten around to reading the rest of this book. I don't know what it is. I hated the first book. So it took me forever to even pick this book up. I just wasn't a fan of it. And now I'm like, okay, I technically actually like this book more than the first one. But I still am not in love. And I love a police officer trope romance. Like, I just love those. But this book is kind of predictable. It's, it's just too much in, like, every angle. Like, it's too big for what the book's about. There's not enough stakes for me, even though they're supposed to be. Like, it's supposed to be high stakes with stuff. No, it's really not. I'm sorry. I'm probably tearing this book. I'm so sorry. If you like this book, shout out to you. It's not really for me. I don't think I and the sad part is I want to get to book three because I know it's for Sloan and Lucian. But I just don't think I'm going to care about that book either. Like the whole book, I really think Lucy score would have literally did amazing if she cut this book. First of all, like this is how much I have left. And I just I feel like I already know everything about the plot. I don't think I care anymore. If she cut this book down. Oh, I think it'd be worth what, like reading so much more. I don't recommend it. I'm sorry I don't and there's that all right next until it fades I was really happily reading this book I'll say I started this book out and I was like oh this is cute this is good it was slow but only I didn't know like how slow it was actually going to stay I love when a book is emotional from the beginning the book was very emotional from the beginning I was invested in the character the main girl what's her name what's her name Catherine I was invested in Catherine's life from the jump and the idea the back of the book also got me this is my kid Tucker by the way until it fades it's supposed to be like a Cinderella concept like a poor girl you know kind of gets rescued by the prince except for she rescues the prince first because in this case it's a hockey player he it's all in the back of the book she saves him in a car crash and then you know their lives kind of intertwine and you know it's supposed to be like a Cinderella story where your life turns around and I was really looking for that for towards that in like a romance way but 
if you read this book, you'll start to see how slow it is. And I don't mean slow in a slow burn kind of way. I mean slow in a, you waited chapters. Spoiler alert. Not really spoiler, but kind of spoiler. I don't know. You waited chapters to introduce the main characters to actually meet each other. That's not slow burn. Slow burn is when the characters are around each other, but every interaction they have is like a mist or angsty moment, or they don't even know what's angsty, but as the reader, we're supposed to feel something like little, little ticks that make you want to stay and keep getting there and let the slow burn build. Keeping characters away from each other and putting them together, that doesn't make it slow burn. It just made me wait longer to read the book, <laughs> like to get there. So I don't know. I do not not recommend this book. It's actually still a good book. I give it a three out of five. I just, I think I was expecting something different, but it's like a positive three out of five. It's not like a Lucy score three out of five where I didn't like it. This is like a three out of five. I was kind of over it. I expected something better, didn't get what I wanted, but it was all right. I did start to skim. So that's another thing I got docked so much because if I'm skimming, I'm not interested anymore. So she kind of lost me there, but I'm not going to give up on this author. I'm excited for more books. I think this was actually one of her interesting books according to her fans anyway like this was not necessarily what they love her for but yeah until it fades katie tucker i say read it if you don't mind extremely 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 slow romance that's not slow burn it's not even that it's slow burn. it's just slow because the story basically the story was about more than the romance and i was looking for a romance more than other stuff in this case so yeah that's that book all right and this is the book that i'm currently reading right now i actually started it last night and i have this much left so it's actually cute sex talk i needed something in my life that was just gonna make me laugh again i'm not done with my rom-com phase although it's starting to kind of simmer down a bit and i'm ready for fantasy a bit but this book is actually really cute it's the x talk nothing crazy it's not something that you're like i'm gonna read it again but it is something that you're gonna eat up while you're reading it medium to low spice level so far there's a little bit of the book left so i don't know if it's gonna get crazy or nothing but i think it's it's pretty tame enough um definitely enemies to lovers-esque it's a work relationship also what's the word for that it's like job romance <laughs> workplace romance <laughs> but it's technically enemies to lovers-esque kind of dislike to love is what it's giving so yeah if you like stuff like that a dislike to love if you like something that's gonna make you laugh it's very much I ain't even gonna say what it is. You know what? Just read it and you tell me if you like it. So far, it's on the track of being a 3.5 out of 5 stars with the way it is. Just a solid 3.5. Nothing crazy, but something fun. And I don't mind that. I actually don't mind a good 3.5. Like, that's like, okay, good. Like, it was a quick little read. When I read books like these books that I'm about to get into, I expect these to hopefully be 4.5s and ups, like where the stakes are high and I'm like really diving deep into it. And I love it. And the characters I love and... The romance is just thrilling and great and everything. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of my books. But this is what I've been on. And I hope this helps you guys for something fun. If you want some different reads, I do recommend out of this Great and Precious Things the most. Um, I second recommend 99% Mine and Faker. Everything else, have fun. Beware. <laughs> If you want to do it, go ahead and have fun. But I will say there's something so fun about going to the library, picking out books. You don't know if you're going to like them or not. You just go off of the back of the book and you read it and it's everything. So, yeah. I also forgot to mention that Faker also has one of my favorite tropes. When one person is sick and the other person has to help them or take care of them. Yo, I eat that up also. So, <laughs> I did enjoy that. I think that's why I gave it a 4.5. I mean, 4 out of 5 star. I think that scene alone... Just boosted it i was like period that's one of my favorite tropes and then it gets thrown into a book it's in um one of my antipata books it's actually in a lot of my antipata books but in uh from luca with love yeah that's done amazingly so i that's another reason i really love that book i'm not gonna lie y'all i have no problem dnf in a book that i'm not enjoying because i in my head like the way i like justify it the way i justify it when i dnf the books i'm like i could be reading something better I could be enjoying myself right now in a whole nother world. So let me DNF this so I can get to that. You know, you got to choose. I'm not about to stay here and fight. Fight for what? I got other books to choose from. Let me go to that. Let me go to that. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's all I wanted to talk about was my current reads and give you guys an update on that. So until next time, much love.